Hi, I'm Dr. Hackey Reitman. Welcome to another episode of Exploring Different Brains. Today, we have the honor of having with us the founder of the College Internship Program, Michael McManman, who founded this program that helps so many of us whose brains might be a little bit different, whether we have Asperger's, autism, ADHD, or you name it, and helps us learn independence, the transition to college life, to employment, and so many other things. We're speaking to Michael from, he's up in Massachusetts. Michael, how are you? I'm really good. How are you doing? Great. Great. It was uh, great to see you out in Portland at the uh, U.S. Asperger's and Autism uh, event out there. And everybody was mesmerized by your talk in which you shared a whole bunch of stuff. Very inspirational. Thank you. Um, and so because of so much that I've learned around you uh, when we've shared the stages and uh, Portland, Tucson, and parts unknown. Um, I want to kind of do this interview in reverse. Instead of starting, how'd you get into this? I want to go backwards. I would like you to tell our audience exactly what you're doing now and what college internship program is doing and what it is now. I want a snapshot of today and then we'll go backwards. Fine. Yeah, well, right now I'm sort of semi-retired, and what I do now for the college internship program is I speak, I write books, I've written three books, my third one is coming out, that's what I was speaking on um, in Portland, it's coming out in a couple of weeks, it's called M Ploy, and it's a, a college readiness, work readiness handbook for young adults on the spectrum and with LD, high school and college to get them ready for work and employment. And what College Internship Program does is we have five centers around the US for 18 to 26 year olds who need comprehensive curriculum to help them either bridge the gap to college, to a four year college or a employment and independent living and we provide uh, a, curric a very comprehensive curriculum in social thinking, executive functioning, sensory issues, everything from therapy to um, apartment living, recreation, et cetera. Um, our um, other programs that we have are high school summer programs at five colleges around the country that serve 16 to 18 year olds. And they're two week programs to prep them for going to a program like ours or independent living. And what we do there is we have them create a person-centered plan during that two weeks for themselves going forward. And we also have one other program, which is called Employ, which is sort of for those kids who are failure to launch, the ones that are on the couches at home who are, you know, above uh, 20 or 26 or so, and they're um, not going anywhere fast. And uh, we take those kids and do employment programs for a couple weeks with employers and really get them sort of restarted. So those are the three things we're doing now. Well, uh, that's great because one of the things I speak about is how we have kind of inadvertently and with all the best intentions discriminated against adults. It's all about the kids, the kids, the kids. But guess what? The kids turn into adults. And as our mutual friend Temple Grandin says, it's all about jobs. It's all about jobs. And these transitions are so tough. Right. We've been standing in that spot for a long time before a lot of people, Temple and us. I've been saying it from the beginning that the uh, it's not just about a degree. Kid can get a degree and not know how to get hold a relationship, how to keep a job, how to you know, navigate the, the world. So it has to be holistic in approach from the very beginning. Building portfolios for kids when they're in high school, junior high, and building those portfolios. Because as you saw in her movie, when she goes to the farm managers and puts that portfolio in their faces, that's when they buy into her. Before that, she's just another goofy woman 
who they don't listen to. Tell us who's running the company while you're what you're calling, quote, semi-retired. Let me tell our audience, this guy is traveling all over the world, lecturing, inspiring, writing, helping out with movies, books, documentaries, and uh, talking to newbies like me. Uh, so who's running the company? Well, I'm very fortunate to have a son who, you know, I took on trips with students who have sort of just observed me, who sort of by accident got into our business when he was injured after college. And I said, why don't you do some work for us, uh, you know, with our website and work with our students on the weekends in the evening while you're looking for a job. And he got so into it and was so good at it that he sort of went up through the system over the 10 years, helping us start programs and do a lot of different things. And he's, he's much more talented in different ways than I am. He's a better manager. He's better with people than I am. I'm, I have different areas where I'm very high functioning, but my social and emotional stuff is still, you know, depending upon the time of day, I can, uh, you know, implode still. So I, I'm not, I'm, he's much more neurotypical and he can handle things better. So I'm very fortunate to have my son step into my shoes and he's actually, you know, filling them very well. Well, it's interesting in the sense, the following sense also. When you describe the college internship program, then you describe yourself. In the college internship program, you say, well, Asperger's, autism, learning disabilities, ADHD, kind of mm. so on and so forth. And what we're doing at Different Brains is we're saying the principles that guide any good thing we're doing, whether it's the college internship program or tools we can use, such as Asper tools and stuff like that, is not only good for Asperger's, autism, anxiety, bipolar, depression, sure. you name it, um, and that none of these things occur in isolation. So I know what you shared with the thousand people who are with us out in Portland. And I wonder how much you would care to share with our Different Brains audience about all the different, for lack of a better term, I'll say comorbidities, labels, that you, Michael, the founder of the college internship program, who's helping so many people, how would you have labeled yourself? Well, I'm definitely a horse of a different color. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, my children know it, and they've always seen me and just sort of accept it. Um, and what I didn't know I had anything going on different totally until about 12 years ago when one of my staff diagnosed me, helped me diagnose myself, sort of. And then I went and got formally diagnosed. But before that, I, the re reason it was so difficult for me to understand who I am and what differences I had is because my family of origin, I had eight brothers and sisters, and half of them were somewhere on the spectrum, either ADD, Asperger's, uh, high-functioning autism. And then on top of that was alcoholism and mental illness. So as a child, I was smart enough to look at all this. I was like a psychologist by the time I was seven or eight. And I would look at this and say, this is not right. This one needs to do that. That one, this one is off base here. But I had no power over any of it. And I just sort of watched it and observed it and said, well, I'm not going to do that. And, um, and so it, it turned out that I learned a lot about how to deal with people with learning differences right at an early age. And then my problem was seeing my own problem, which was sort of, I sort of fit in and passed for neurotypical. I could easily pass my classes. I socially wasn't that out of it that I didn't look that different. And so I just sort of hung on the fringes of the the other people around me and just sort of did what they did and I got by. But when I started to have relationship and when I got in my marriage, 
and my business, I noticed that I just didn't pair up. I had a lot of offsetting positive qualities that people liked me because of them, like perseverance, all these Aspie qualities, intelligence, um, wanting to do the right thing, doing what I say every time, showing up. So I had all those, and those really helped a lot in business and dealing with people. Because if you are who you say you are, and you do what you say you do, the banks like you, the parents like you, and you follow through. So I had made a lot of mistakes over and over, social mistakes, everything. And luckily, there wasn't the political correctness there is now, because I would have been fired <laughs> for some of the things I said in staff meetings and things, but I've learned through, since I've been diagnosed, to have a, a modulator between here and here. And this is a little five second delay that lets me edit before I say things, which has helped my life immensely in every area. And I've also been able to, I think the biggest area that's missed by people everywhere in colleges and everything is the sensory. They know about it, but a college program, like at a university, what are they gonna do for a sensory program for a kid who's in a college dorm? Uh, they don't have someone who's gonna come and do that. They might have a social skills class or some kind of remediation. They might have tutoring, untimed testing, note takers, all these other things, but they don't have that. So I've had to learn to do that for myself. And what that means is that, for example, that day that you saw me speak at USAAA, I swam late in the morning, went up to the pool and swam, took a break, and that reset me emotionally and socially. Then I knew it was going. It was late. It was later in the afternoon, which I'm not good in the afternoon. I make sure the lights were correct in the room that they weren't overwhelming me. I checked out way in the morning, all of the audio stuff to make sure. Because if I had a problem, I would get flustered. And so I do a lot of prep work for myself. I make sure I you know, wear comfortable clothes around my neck, that I um, you, you know, ate before the presentation. I had a power bar with a lot of protein in it that I just downed right before it. I took extra vitamins during the middle of the day. So I do all of these things to help myself be at my best and actually, my buddy Stephen Shore sort of taught me some of that, that. The way he does airplanes and navigates the world is amazing. And he knows how to judge exactly when it's going to land, how much sleep you should get, everything. So I've been able to be in the big boys' table for the last 10 years <laughs> because, I, because I can keep myself in reasonable condition. Because if I start saying stupid stuff or even expletives, you know, I then it's all over for me. So I have to be very careful. Well, you know, it, I, I feel so lucky because I get to learn from and hang around with and share the stage with people who are far, far, way, way in a different league than me, such as we're just talking about tonight, matter of factly, we're talking about a great man like Stephen Shore, who's been on every continent except maybe one, I think, and lectured Antarctica. all over the world. <laughs> I don't think he's lectured on Antarctica yet. Yeah, I think that's his only <laughs> one. And there was a guy who was nonverbal, told he should be institutionalized. And then there's, exactly. of course, Temple Grandin. Then there's you. I mean, it's a very rarefied club that you guys are in. And I recognize um, happily that I'm that. I'm just glad to be around that club, you know, and sure. And a lot of my, I owe my Stephen's mother did that for him and created his own preschool for him. My mom had so many kids that she couldn't do that. But, but what did do that for me was Catholic school because of the structure. And most of the teachers, I only had one who was um, hell on wheels but the rest of them were very supportive. And even I had a couple, um, like a brother in seventh grade, who I still have contact with, sort of like Temple has contact with her high school teacher that helped her. My seventh grade teacher was only a few years older than me. 
when he taught me. And so I still have contact with him. He's in all of my books. He was my mentor and he guided me through some of the most difficult stuff in my family life. He didn't even know it until I told him later how his, his standing for me was so important emotionally for me. And so that's like something I would like to say to people out there. You don't realize how important each child needs a connection like that, where they can go to someone. In my family, there was no one to go to. It was all a secret what was going on. So I had no one to talk to about anything. And that you take that into you, it becomes like part of your being, and then you have to get rid of it somehow or emote from it. And being Asperger's, I didn't emote. I didn't cry. I didn't, I didn't do much of that stuff. So it all was absorbed, came out later, much later than most people, like not in my teens, more in my 30s and 40s, when I started to go through my adolescence, my emotional adolescence. Which is not good for your marriage, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> How many have you had? What's that? How many marriages have you had? Uh, two. But you know what? I've given myself permission to, I said, Michael, you're an extremely creative person who is difficult to live with. And I gave myself permission that it's all right. And I have these six children and 17 grandchildren. And it's more than enough to keep me busy. And, I'm, you know, and I'm friends with all the people I've been in relationship with. It was a unique experience for them, but we're still friends. And I share children with one of them, you know. So. Well, that's how life's supposed to be. It's a journey. Yeah. Not a destination. We're all learning. And um, we learn how to be nice to each other, which is a novel idea. Sure. When in doubt... Be nice. Um, exactly. And you're certainly a lucky man to have such a large extended family. Uh, and sure. take all the things you learn and impart that knowledge to other. You know, to all of our Different Brains audience out there who might be volunteers or teachers or coaches, what Michael just said about the mentoring process, just somebody who gets it, who understands who takes the time that Michael and I want all of society to do to tune in on that individual different brain. And remember this, oftentimes the individuals who have it most difficult are the ones who can, quote, pass for, quote, neurotypical, whatever that is, as Michael was saying exactly. about himself. Yeah, yeah. It's not like if you're an amputee, well, you're missing a leg. Um, or if you're severely this or that or anything. This is an intelligent person, and this is very frequent in, let's say, high-functioning Asperger's and high-functioning autism. Yeah, to and I would say, to add to that, I would say every corporation, every business needs an Aspie like me because what they can do for them is bring a unique perspective, and that's what you want. You, you want to like double check yourself, say, hey, what's different ways of doing it, these things? They bring that to them. I also wanted to add something to what we were talking about before. Here are some of the qualities of an Aspie that play out really well as a dad, as a business owner, even in a relationship. And they really, I mean, other than the confounding ones, for example, paying your bills on time all the time. I can go to the bank and they'll do anything for me. I uh, never had a loan refused for a building or anything we're doing with our business. I paid all my kids' college to, uh, bills off so they don't have to carry those with them. I helped them buy houses, start businesses. This is because fundamentally I do things in a very, you know, a structured way and I run my money and I use it well and I don't waste it and I'm on time for everything you know all these things like this add up to really good qualities I never forget a birthday of any of my children I have a personal gift probably have half of them already for Christmas for those 17 grandchildren and those six children and their wives and husbands and so 
it's things that we do that are offsetting qualities if a spouse can see through that. They get all these other good things that come with the relationship. They might get someone that doesn't recognize if they stepped on their toes emotionally immediately, and that's a problem. But they get all these other things that I think are offsetting qualities. A lot of our audience is going to want to get in touch with you. How do they best get in touch with you and learn more about you and the college internship program? Well, they're not going to call me and not going to text me, but they're good. They can use my email, which is M McMahon, my last name, which is M C M A N M O N. It's a tongue twister. So, um, it's, you can look at our website and get a hold of me, which is college internship program.org. And there's, there's all of my stuff is on there and you can see what, watch all the videos and do whatever you want. So basically, yeah, you can get me through the website. That's probably the easiest. And um, I do have a blog on psychology today. That's pretty, you know, it's there still. If you want to, that's another way. Uh, Where can people learn more about your new and upcoming book and your other books and other things you've done? Oh, yeah. Um, Just go to Jessica Kingsley Publishers. All my books are through her. The third one is coming out soon. Uh, Like I said, the next couple of weeks. They're all on Jessica Kingsley Publisher, you know, dot com. She's in the UK and in, in Philadelphia. So they're all worldwide. And it's um, it's real simple. Or you can just go on Amazon dot com if you want to save money. <laughs> and I shouldn't say that. But uh, and you can get them used uh, and just Google my name and you'll get you'll get it all. Well, Michael, it's been a pleasure to have you here. We've had as our guest today, Michael McManman of the College Internship Program. And we hope to have Michael back very soon because he's just loaded with information, insights, and inspiration. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for having me. Exploring Different Brains is a production of Different Brains, Inc. For more information, visit us at differentbrains.org.